Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to go back in time. We're going to go back to the 60s for sure on a reel that I just picked up this past weekend at a flea market. This is uh, something that's pretty common that you're going to find even though the reel is at least 50 years old. Uh, it's uh, a durable reel. It's made by Ocean City Manufacturing Company. They last made reels in 1968, so I know that it's uh, at least 50 years old. This is the model 940. And uh, we're going to take it apart. We'll show you how it's uh, put together, how to service one of these if you pick it up at a flea market, and uh, how to ensure that uh, it stays in good condition and, uh, and can get used uh, probably for another 50 years if it's well maintained. Uh, we're going to start by taking the drag side off as we usually do. Uh, the Ocean City comes with a nice little feature on most handles. It's uh, unscrew the handle nut and you have your wrench. So we can pull that back and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the history of Ocean City uh, manufacturing as we go through this one because uh, it, it is no longer in production and a lot of times Ocean City gets confused uh, with the pen manufacturing uh, company and a lot of times you'll see online they'll, they'll say it's a pen reel and it's not it's an Ocean City reel uh, but Ocean City uh, predated pen Ocean City was actually formed in 1923 and it was formed as a uh, a merger of two companies, two, manu uh, two machinist shops. One of them was Moskowitz and Herbeck, and the other one was the Sturdy Built Products Company, uh, and they were in Philadelphia. Um, later on, Ocean City actually acquired um, Montague uh, Reel Company, Rods and Reels. Uh, that was in the early 30s, and a little bit later, uh, Edwin Huff, uh, Von Huff, and Von Huff uh, was a Brooklyn company, uh, there's a lot of collectible reels out there from Von Huff, a lot of them from Julius Von Huff, which I believe is the, the brother of, the, uh, of Ed Edward, but uh, regardless, uh, Ocean City did, uh, did acquire those assets as well. And then uh, Ocean City, in, uh, in the war years, actually worked with General Electric Company. Uh, no, not quite sure what they made, but uh, they were supporting the war effort as a machinist shop. And then post-war, they came out with a whole bunch of models and uh, reels based on uh, the manufacturing technologies that uh, uh, they learned about uh, and developed during the war. So it's, it's not unusual to see the uh, Ocean City reels um, in flea markets. They're sturdy. Uh, they've been around a long time. Uh, the design was good. And... Uh, this, uh, this is evidence of one of them. It's a 50-year-old reel. It's in pretty good condition. Now, actually, I picked this up uh, off the table thinking it might be a, a gray-sided uh, pen reel, which uh, it's not. It's an Ocean City. But uh, the pen reels, uh, this is a nice, clean reel. Uh, we're gonna, so we'll just show you how to service this. The pen reels, they used to make um, predominantly uh, black-sided reels. But for the charter boat industry, they made uh, gray-sided reels, and they did that so that the party, party boat captains or the charter boat captains could identify those reels easily and uh, make sure that customers weren't walking off the deck with them uh, because it would only be a reel that you could have as a, uh, as a boat captain. So we're going to put a little bit of grease on that uh, bushing there on the side plate and put that spool back in. Uh, and let's go over to the business side of this. So this is a, this is a different design than uh, the pen reels. Uh, they, this transition piece here, the jack. It's uh, got a lot of different uh, setups on Ocean City, but predominantly they're all the same. This one has a, a little lever clip here that uh, needs to be uh, loosened so that it can be uh, brought off that eccentric yoke there. And um, so you push down on the, the gear set, pull up on this uh, jack piece, uh, yoke, and um, you can get the yoke out. Okay, so uh, you didn't have to take, when, when we remove this, you do not need to take the two top screws off. In a, in a pen reel, again, you would take those two off. In an Ocean City, you do not. These are spring carriers. They're loaded from uh, um, little brass posts that are held in by the top screws. You don't need to, to touch them to get to the, the drag assemblies. You'll notice that I'm also taking my pieces and parts and I'm putting them into a parts tray. Uh, that's so that I know where they are when I go to uh, rebuild the reel. 
and uh, you'll also notice that I'm wearing a protective glove here uh, to keep contaminants off my uh, my hands. So the only two screws you have to do to get to the bridge are the bottom two screws. Now these screws are different than those other screws you took out of the side plate, so you want to make sure that you uh, you keep them separate when uh, when you go to rebuild this reel. So either put it in a separate corner of the parts tray or put it back onto the bridge when uh, when you're working with them. But these actually have some collar nuts inside here. You can see the two of these collar nuts that come out. Sometimes it's just easy enough to, to put them right back into the um, the screws right back into those nuts so that you know which ones go on. If you try to put a side post nut into uh, into this uh, and side post screw into the, the bridge plate nut, you're going to strip it. Okay, so we'll just put those two together there, put them in a the corner so that I know where to find them. Again, these are the two uh, two springs that uh, load for the free spool release. There's a little bit of dirt in there, so I'm going to go clean it out. I use a cotton swab, but overall, for a 50 plus year old reel, maybe even a 60 year old reel, I'm not sure exactly the date of manufacture but it's at least 50 because that's the last time Motion City made a reel, 1968. So Ocean City is also, uh, it's a Philadelphia based company, or was a Philadelphia based company, so sometimes that's why it gets confused with Penn. And uh, it also gets confused with Penn because Penn's founder, Otto Henze, if I'm pronouncing that right, H-E-N-Z-E, um, first worked for Ocean City. And uh, in the early 30s, he left to form uh, the Penn Manufacturing Company, Penn Reels, and uh, also located in Philadelphia. And uh, he's, Penn Reels survives, although it's gone from a transition. It's now owned by Pure Fishing, uh, but it, it survives to this day, as many of you are aware. Okay, so this is our bridge assembly. The, uh, the collar nut uh, going onto the pinion shaft, the gear sleeve works fine. The anti-reverse works fine. We just put a little machine oil on that any reverse just to keep it loose. And I'm taking these off and I'm noticing that the the main gear is clean and it looks like the drags, I'm sure the drags have been serviced at some point in life. These aren't 50 year old drags but they're flexible as well. So uh, I don't need to replace these. Now parts aren't available for these but I do know that the Penn uh, 155 Beachmaster series drags uh, work on these. They're pretty much identical in, in uh, size, so if you uh, if you do have one of these reels and it does need uh, to have the drags replaced, um, you can go ahead and order those pen drag washers and they will work. And uh, if I was doing anything other than just going to show this reel off, I probably would upgrade them to the, the pen drags right now, but as it is, I'm just going to keep these flexible. And you'll notice I have that plastic glove, and that works well for spreading the, the drag grease. I use a, a, a uh, Cal's Universal drag grease here. And uh, you'll find this reel not just as an Ocean City brand, but Ocean City also made a lot of uh, department store brands. So you'll find this one as a Montgomery Woods reel. You'll find this as a J.C. Higgins reel, which was sold by Sears. I've seen... Uh, on rare occasion, it goes back sometimes, so I can't say with absolute certainty, but I believe I've seen them from Macy's and uh, Dayton Hudson as well. So uh, a lot of the, the catalog reels uh, that were manufactured uh, were manufactured by Ocean City uh, for those uh, those outlets. Um, Ocean City was a later, uh, before it uh, went out of business, it was acquired by True Temper, the hardware store. and. Uh, and eventually ceased uh, manufacturing operations. So you'll see this reel as a true temper reel as well. Okay, I'm taking off the uh, the um, collar or the yoke. I'm just going to put some grease on that. This reel again is very clean. This has a two-piece uh, gearing system as the uh, uh, transition sleeve and then it has a uh, the pinion gear behind it. Oops. Sometimes it's just you should have put it in. Like that. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and reinstall this. So I'm going to do it the reverse way that we took it out. We're going to go take the, the drag, uh, the bridge assembly, and go put that in. 
I'm going to grab those two uh, nut sleeves and screws. And again, I kept them together because there is a different uh, different screw there. You don't want to mix them up with the side plate screws. So this is a good time to, to suggest if you don't work on these reels frequently, if you don't know much about them, when you're taking these apart, take pictures. That way uh, if you have an easy reference. Use your cell phone camera, digital camera. Uh, in this case, I'm using a video. Uh, and it'll point out to you uh, if you have an extra piece of part laying around where that came from and the sequence that it came from. And uh, it's not uh, uh, useless advice there. I just had a viewer tell me on one of my videos that I had left the piece uh, laying on my, uh, my bench when I didn't use my parts tray. Uh, I was kind of rushing through a, uh, a demonstration on a rotor repair and left out a lock nut. But uh, I went back uh, later, viewed it the video, saw it, and I uh, was able to correct that. So uh, there you go. OK, so we put that in. Now we're going to go take that collar and, and uh, yoke and the pinion gear, which we've assembled. We're going to go put that in. So again, it's a fairly uncomplicated uh, arrangement here, which is probably why it can last uh, as long as it does. All right, we're going to put some uh, some blue grease again on the uh, on that gear. I use a pen universal grease, but uh, you can use uh, just about anything you want there, uh, as long as it's a, a real grease and not uh, like an axle grease or. Uh, Automotive grease, those are way too thick. But if you have anybody's manufacturer, and most manufacturers supply that kind of a grease, then uh, go ahead and use that. All right, uh, so then once we line that up, we've, we've put them in the slots on the, uh, the carrier for the, uh, the yoke. And then we can just fit that hook against that. And then we can retighten that little holding screw there. And again, this is pretty simple maintenance. So it was a ten dollar uh, find at a uh, local flea market. Uh, it's a nice, clean reel, and uh, so we're going to be able to put this one back in, uh, back together again, show it off. And uh, if somebody wants to fish it, those drags aren't that bad. Uh, actually, they're, they're good, and uh, they can be fished for a long time. Okay, so now what we do is we're reversing the process now. So I'm bringing out the side plate screws. Another thing that's very common between uh, the Penn and Ocean City is that you have two small side plate screws for the real seat, and you have uh, four longer ones for the crossbars. And I guess, uh, you know, whatever intellectual property was back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, a lot of these designs were either uh, industry common or uh, just brought with them, but uh, the setups on a lot of these looks so similar that I can see where it's easily confused when somebody says, you know, an, an ocean, calls an Ocean City reel a pen reel and, and so on. And they do that a lot with the, the Ocean City 112, uh, Bay City reels. There's, there's a whole host of uh, named city kind of reels with these things. Uh, but uh, it's easy enough to see that they're so similar in a lot of regards uh, that it's easily confused. Uh, the big differences usually is in the handle and it's in the uh, free spool lever. If those are the ones that are usually the signatures uh, that tell the difference uh, between the two reels other than reading the brand name on them. Okay, so one more side plate screw and then we can just go put the, the star drag back on. I'm, I'm getting some of that grease from the drag grease I notice on the, uh, the side plate here so we'll, we'll clean that up as well. Before we do, we'll just give it a quick test. We'll make sure that it free spools. Yep, free spools fine. And uh, now we're going to go put the ferrule in. And this one is always a problem. Uh, for whatever reason, they, they're difficult to seat. And I think they probably knew that in manufacturing because they provide you a slot in the, uh, the sleeve gear that you can actually grab with a a screwdriver if you need to to steady it and that's it it's starting to spin now so let's see if I can't find a screwdriver to anchor this with 
And again, there's a slot right in there you can grab that with. And that works pretty good because you don't damage the threads on the inside as you're doing that. It's just a tough, tough one or two turns there. And then it seems like once you get past the uh, where the handle is, where the handle may have pulled it out a little bit, then, uh, then it spools fine. Okay, so then the handle goes on, a shot of uh, real oil, and I use Real X uh, into the gear sleeve itself. And we'll put the handle nut on. And again, that's the nice thing with the Ocean City reels, a lot of them have the handle wrench right on the handle, so it's hard to lose it. So you finish tightening with that. So this is uh, this is always fun, and a little history lesson doesn't uh, doesn't hurt either. But uh, if uh, if you ever wondered whatever happened to your uh, reel, where it was made, how uh, how the companies have evolved, uh, it's always nice to to kind of catch up and learn that uh, you know it came from a machinist shop, a uh, combination of machinists. It uh, evolved, uh, bought a couple of companies, Montague and Vom Hoff, and uh, eventually was acquired itself by True Temper, and then went out of business in 1968, but it was a quality reel at the time. Very affordable, not very collectible, but very affordable. And uh, with the service that we just did here, the drags, uh, drags are working nice. With the service that we just did here i can go fishing again so uh, i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you learned something from it uh, if you like it please like it on uh, youtube if you want to see more please subscribe to my channel and uh, i post uh, frequently so i thank you for watching this one and uh, hope that you uh, watch the future ones as well again this is dennis with second chance tackle thank you